Hey, what's up? Jim here from Code and Quick Tips. Today with a new Slick 2D tutorial. This video is requested by Philip, and it should be about how to fire and bullet in your game. So, what will you be able to do um, after you watch the video? You will actually be able to fire any kind of projectile um, from a specific position, for example. Um, if you click somewhere in the screen, a certain bullet fires to that position and you can also use this technique and adapt it, adapt it to things like rockets or something. To start off, I just use, as always, an empty slick to the game and that's our starting point. To start off, we will create a new class that will represent our bullet because we will somehow need to have bullet objects that can be fired. So I'll start by creating a new class. There we go. And I will call it bullet. That class should represent our bullet. So um, what properties do our bullet need? So at first our bullet will, will need a position because we always need to know where the bullet is right now. So private vector 2f sets a 2d vector provided by slick 2d for the position um before um you go on watching the video i really would recommend you to know a little bit about um vectors it's not necessary but it's always good to know about vectors if you're in game programming so we will also need somehow the direction where the bullet will fly and this direction should be represented um, by an also by a vector because it's a 2D direction, so it's an X and a Y direction. So we can also represent that direction where the bullet will later on fly with a vector. So for example, if the bullet should fly to the right uh, with a speed of 100 pixels per second, we will overgive a vector with x100 and then our bullet will move 100 pixels per second to the right side. So for the private vector to f for our, yeah, let's call it speed where the bullet flies or, yep. And we will also need, if the bullet um, can live, so always if we fire up objects that can be fired by the player, or if you create objects that can be created by the player, we will need to destroy them somehow, and in case of our bullet, I would say we we handle it with like a lifetime thing, so if the bullet exists for more than 3 seconds or something, it will be destroyed because then it's out of range from the player, so we can destroy it actually. For that thing, that we can destroy the bullet if we don't need it anymore, we will need two variables, we will need a constant variable, for the lifetime, I will um, calculate the lifetime in milliseconds, as it's usual on PCs. So, private static int max lifetime equals, let's say, two seconds, just for um, test purposes. We will also need a variable to hold how long the bullet lived already, because we will need to compare if the bullet lived longer than those two seconds. So private integer um, lift or something for the times that our bullet has already um, lived. So I will set this to zero at the start because if we spawn a new bullet it will be completely fresh. So it lived for null um, zero uh, milliseconds. To start off with a constructor we just over give the pass and the speed of the bullet. So public um, bullet vector to f pos for the position and vector uh, vector vector to f for the speed there we go so sys dot pos equals pos sys dot speed equals speed so we just um, let the user set those values if he creates a new bullet. And then our bullet will actually obviously need two methods, one to render it and one to update its position. So public void update for the update. 
and the update will take the delta in milliseconds from the other update method. We will need the delta to provide a smooth movement, as I showed you in another video. So int t for the delta time. Um, okay, so the update method will be like the main thing. Um, okay, I nearly forgot one variable. We will also create a private boolean active equals true at the start. That will represent if our bullet is active. So if it's de um, despawned or if it's destroyed, we will set this to false. So it won't be updated anymore. So we go in here and say if active, because if our bullet is active, we want to do the uh, update stuff. And then we will take our pause and we want to add something. But what do we want to add? So we will actually need to add a new vector and we will need to add the speed. But we will need to add a certain speed because the speed must be pro processed with the delta time. So we will add a new vari variable. We will add the speed dot copy because we don't want to destroy our normal speed. And here we will use a scale method. With the scale method we can actually apply a certain scale factor to the um, vector so it will be stretched or um, the other way around. <laughs> I don't know the word right now. So we will um, use that variable to actually make it smaller. So I will add in here t through 1000 and set value will always be um, below 1. So with set set to our um, speed, our bullet will exactly um, travel, um, how's it called, it will exactly travel um, how big the speed vector is per second. So if the speed vector x is 100, it will travel 100 with set. So um, vector to f, a real speed or something that we will give. Uh, okay, um, I failed here a bit. We will first need to copy it and then we will need to apply that factor. So there we go. And after that we can actually take it here. So what we do, we take our speed, copy it, we uh, same go brackets. Then we will scale it so that our delta time is used in it, and then we will add the speed. So now the bullet moves. We will also um, add to the lift time set delta time because so we can count how long the bullet has lived already. And then we will check if lift is bigger than max. Ah, there we go. Life time. Then our bullet will actually need to despawn or will need to be destroyed, and to do that, we will set active to false. Okay, there we go. And what we also want to do, we want to add a render method. So I just go to the game scene and steal the render method here <laughs> and add it in. So now we got a render method, and in here we just um, want to render the bullet. So I will draw a basic um, circle. So g dot set color, color dot red. Let's make red bullets. Um, g dot uh, fill oval, and now we must get the position. So pos dot get x minus ten, pos dot get y, minus 10, 20 and 20. With well, that we will just render the bullet as at the given position. Um, one last thing that we will need later on is a public boolean is active method that will show if the bullet is, uh, is um, active. We will need that to detect in our game if we can delete a bullet. So we go here and return if it's active. There we go. Okay, for set our bullet class is completely finished normally. And now we'll go back to our game and try the bullet out. In set video I will 
um, only show you the bullet class. In the next video, I will show you a first technique to spawn and despawn the bullet. And in the next video, after that video, I will show you a second technique to um, spawn and despawn the bullet. But for that video, we will try out our bullet. So, private bullet B. And we will just init it here. So, B equals new bullet. And it will take two vectors. So, vector 2F is a starting position. So, let's say 100, 100. And then vector 2F for the speed per se, uh, for the distance that our bullet will travel per second. So, I will say 500 in X and 100 in Y. Uh, somehow failed here. Vector 2F. Uh, okay. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a mistake. So we will import that, and now it works. So we will spawn the bullet at 100, 100, and let it travel with set speed. Now we will only need to call the bullets update and the bullets render method. There we go. Now we spawn a bullet that actually flies through the screen. I will make it a bit, a bit slower for debug reasons so that we can actually see it traveling. Okay, there we go. Works quite good. And okay, as you can see, it works as we wanted. And as the next step, we will now need to actually somehow dynamically spawn bullets and dynamically release them. But because I think that will be too much for one video, I will do two more videos about two techniques how to do that. One a bit more classical one and one a bit more advanced one. And yep, I think that's it for that video. I really hope you enjoyed and I would love to see you in the next two videos.